All right. Hi, everyone. So last week, so let's go back one week. So last week was, well, last time we got together was June 12th. And uh, the title was When Things Fall Apart. And the two, two concepts we, were, we worked with was falling apart and coming together. And this is my reflection. So after each class, I spend about 10, 15 minutes re um, reflecting over what we did and what I learned. And then I write down a few words. Okay, so today is June 26. So I have my journal here. And then let's see what Pema has to tell us today. And the uh, reading that I chose is titled, We Never Know. We Never Know. When we think that something is going to bring us pleasure, we don't know what's really going to happen. When we think something is going to give us misery, we don't know. Letting there be room for not knowing is the most important thing of all. We try to do what we think is going to help, but we don't know. We never know if we're going to fall flat or sit up tall. When there's a big disappointment, we don't know if that's the end of the story. It may be just the beginning of a great adventure. Okay, so let's move to the physical practice and we have to pick from the text we're going to pick two concepts uh, so maybe the two concepts that we work with today is uh, is this the end of the story or is it the beginning of a great adventure so maybe we like is it the end or is it the beginning so maybe those are the two concepts that we work with as we um, practice today okay so finding your seat, sitting up tall, and then starting to move your feet, looking at the heels, looking at the toes, and noticing the connection between the soles of your feet and the earth. And then coming to stillness. And then bring your awareness to your two sitting bones, the two sitting bones. And maybe one symbolizes the end of something and the other symbolizes the beginning of something. So the end and the beginning, the end and the beginning. And if you want to, you can, you can transfer your weight slightly from one sitting bone to the other and really feel the end and feel the beginning. And then eventually finding your way to neutral. And then if you want to use your fingers and gently tap uh, at the top of your head, you can use your fingers to open up, open up. So what are we trying to open, opening up? We're trying to open up the shushumna, that chimney or that opening, um, the core of you that is empty uh, and can connect with both the universe and uh, the earth. And then maybe imagine how you take one of those um, brushes that you can clean bottles with and then how you're brushing or cleaning the core of you, cleaning the shushumna. Notice if your inhale goes up or down. There's no right and wrong here. Just notice if you inhale up or inhale down. So you're moving your breath in your shoshona. Cleaning, clearing, improving the connection to the earth and to the universe.
And then place your hands on your knees and then start the cat and cow motion. Keeping the physical spine and the spiritual core uh, flexible and strong. Maybe exhale as you round your back. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale and round. Inhale into your back bend. And then eventually finding your way back uh, to neutral. And then look at your hands. And then open and close the fingers. So blinking, bubbling stars, blinking, bubbling stars. All the way up, clasp the hands, turn them over, straighten the elbows, breathe. Maybe breathe into the nose and out to the mouth. And then reach and reach and reach and reach. And then turn and open up the arms, look behind you. Let the fingers move away from each other as much as possible. How far can your fingertips reach? And then release, lift and, uh, lift and release the shoulders a few times. And then look at your fingers again, blinking, bubbling stars. All the way up, clasp the hands, turn them over, straighten the elbows to breathe. If you want to, you can turn your tongue into a little straw when you exhale. That's a calming breath. And then reach and reach and reach and reach. Turn, open up the arms, look behind you. And how far, how far can your fingertips reach? And then release, lift the shoulders a few times. And then um, place the arms in cactus. And then gently turn from side to side. So in yoga, twisting is gaining perspective. And today, the two perspectives we're, we're thinking about or working with is uh, the end or the beginning. So when something happens, is that the end? Or maybe uh, it's a beginning of something else. So those are two um, opposite perspectives. And maybe, we, usually we have a pattern. So maybe most of the time I see things as a beginning or maybe I see things as an end. Uh, and when whatever that pattern is, that's our main pattern. Uh, so like swimming with the current, that's easy for us to do because we've done it a million times before. So maybe think about what is your pattern? Do you, do you see things as like, this is the end or this is the beginning? What is your pattern? And then do the opposite. What's the opposite? Okay. And then what would happen if you allow the two con concepts to connect? So letting the elbow and the knee connect. So elbows and knees are very similar joints, but they are different. 
So maybe one is symbolizing the beginning and the other one is symbolizing the end. So what would happen if you allowed those two to meet? Maybe even do cross with the opposite elbow, opposite knee. And then stay there, stay, stay, stay. Breathe, you can look behind you, you can uh, straighten that elbow behind you if you want to. Breathe. And then release. And then try the other side, so stay connected, stay to get connected. Still breathing. And then release. And then lean back and bring both knees up, both knees and both elbows. Breathe. If you want, you can turn this into boat posture. Or we can do one, one leg at a time. And then eventually release down. Okay. With a wide and stable stance, we can explore these two concepts more. So find the sitting bones. One is the end and one is the beginning. And then start to move from side to side, thinking about, is this the end or this is this the beginning? So that's the black and white thinking. And then start imagining what lies in between black and uh, white. What are the, all the other colors? And then start to explore that with your body. And then come back to uh, neutral. Look at your hand. Now let's start with the end. So imagine this is the end of something. Um, pick a color. Dip your fingers in the color of the end. And then draw the image. Draw the image. What does it look like when this is the end of the story? What does that look like? And then release that image. And then use your left hand. Um, and this time we're going to imagine that this is the beginning. This is the beginning of a great adventure. So um, what is the color? Dip your fingers in paint and then draw the image of the beginning. This is the beginning. What does that look like to you? And then release that image. Okay, now um, jump the feet together. Now look at your toes, look at your toes. And then dip the toes in ink. And then draw, write the story, write the story about this is the end. Write the story about the end. Write the story about the end. And then step out wide, elbows to knees, fingertips together, breathe. And then release down, let the head be heavy. Inhale, come back up and then place the foot on the knee. Use your fingers to open up the toes. Gently guide that right knee out wide.
And then slide the knees together. Whatever leg is on top, that arm goes under. Give yourself a hug. And then move into eagle. Move into eagle. You can close your eyes if you want to. Now, this is an eagle uh, that is at the end. This is an eagle that finds itself at the end of a story. What does it look like? How does it feel? And then allow that for that eagle to fly away, fly away, fly away. Okay. Now, the other side, so look at your toes, spread the toes, dip the toes in ink, and write the story of the beginning. This is the beginning. So write the story of the beginning. And then step out wide, elbows to knees, fingertips together, breathe. And then release down, let the head be heavy. Come back up. Now place the left hand on the floor, the right hand on the right knee. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, look up. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Maybe let the top arm come up. You're still breathing. And then bring that top hand down and under. Walk the left hand forward and look up under your armpit. Inhale, come back up. And then place the right hand on the floor, left hand on the left knee. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale, look up. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, twist a little deeper. And then let the top arm come up. And then bring it down and under. Um, Walk the right hand forward and look under your armpit. Inhale, come back up. And then all the way up, place the left foot on the right knee. Use your finger to open up the toes. Gently guide that left knee up wide. And then slide the knees together. Whatever leg is on top, that arm goes under. Give yourself a hug. Remember or remind yourself how much you love yourself. And then find your way to eagle, eagle posture. And this eagle is different. This eagle sees the beginning. This eagle sees the beginning of a story or a great adventure. What does that eagle look like? How does it feel? Look at the eyes, the feathers, how does it move? And then let that bird fly. Let that bird fly all away and then land back on top of the mountain in Tadasana. Okay, so let's jump the feet wide. Bleating, bubbling stars again, all the way up. Clasp the hands, turn them over. Uh, straighten the elbows, breathe. 
Now imagine that your arms are wings and your fingers are feathers. So really um, st uh, straighten and lengthen your arms and spread your wings wide, spread your wings wide. And then go out flying, go out flying. High up in the air, what do you see? What do you see? And then turn the palms up, exhale, dive deep, inhale up, exhale, dive deep, inhale, come up, exhale, dive deep. And this time bring the arms behind you, hold on to opposite forearms. Breathe. Now notice your wings or your arms, notice any aches and pains. And then imagine that your breath is like a healing water, warm, healing, rinsing water. And let that water rinse and clean and heal whatever needs to be rinsed, cleaned and healed. And then release the right arm, shake it out, bring it up and over and allow the fingertips to move towards each other. They don't have to touch. Just imagine how the fingers are connecting. And then release. Now let the left arm come out, come out, shake it out, up and over. And let those fingertips move closer to each other. They don't have to touch. Just imagine how they are connecting. And then release. Now let's do one more thing. Uh, so let's bring the hands down to the floor and then walk the hands forward. Walk the hands forward as far as you can. And then come back up. Okay, now we're gonna build some strength in the legs. So bring your knees a little, like bring your heels a little closer to the chair. Big inhale, exhale, come up and stand. And then let's pick 10. So here we go, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, shake it out. Okay, big inhale, exhale, and let's do, I'm gonna do 10 again. You can pick the same or different number. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Shake it out. Now, before we come up, Place your hands behind, clasp your hands behind your back. Try to straighten the elbows and then lean forward. And maybe bring, bring those hands up. Inhale, come back up. Stay there for a while. Notice the inhale, notice the exhale, there's no rush.
and then bring the feet closer, big inhale, exhale, and come up to standing. Okay, so we're gonna start with a breath of joy. So there's three inhales and one exhale. So starting with the arms out wide, inhale one, two, three, exhale. Inhale one, two, three, exhale. Inhale one, two, three, exhale. And then let the arms go, let the arms go. And you can let the arms circle around. You can go from side to side. Just let the arms go. And then letting the knee and the elbow connect. So maybe you think about um, the end and the beginning. So those are two opposite perspectives. And what happens if you allow the end and the beginning to connect? And then finding position of power, position of power. Now place your hands on solar plexus. That's the uh, power center in, the, in, in your body. Bend the knees, inhale into your center of power. Exhale, open up. Inhale into the power center. Exhale, open up. One more time. Inhale in. Exhale out. And then stay there, stay there open. Imagine how you're breathing in through the center of your body and then exhaling out through the arms, legs, head and tail. And then bring your hands back on your hips and then starting to build external support. So how do we build external support? Engaging the external hips. And then lean and lift, lean and lift. So creating more external support and practicing balance. And then the other way. And when we have that, we can take skillful action, taking skillful action. Okay, so, and then release. Now we're gonna, we, now we got, so we all have patterns and one is more dominant than the other. So we wanna push away the dominant pattern to create to allow the less dominant to come in uh, and create balance so if you want to you can pick so or do you usually see things that this is the beginning or do you usually see things that this is the end so whatever it is um that's your that's your pattern and we want to push that away so pick whatever you do most of the time as um give it a shape a, a smell a color a shape and then push it away, push it away, push it away, push it away. And it's going to try to come back in and it's going to be super hard to resist. And you're going to give in a little bit, but then you're going to win and you're going to push it away, push it away, push it away. And it's going to stay away. Maybe you have to kick a little bit. And eventually you have created balance and you can release the arm. Okay, let's celebrate that with three sound salutations. 
So inhale, arms up. Exhale, up and over. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way back up. Exhale, down the midline. That was one. Two more. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, up and over. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way back up. Exhale, down the midline. That was two. Last one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, up and over. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way back up. Exhale down the midline and then stay there holding your own heart in between your hands with self-love and self-compassion. And release. Okay, we're gonna step back to warrior one. Inhale to chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra. Transfer the weight to the left, right heel comes off. Take a big step back. Find the earth behind you with the toes and then the heel. Both hip bones are pointing forward. And when you have a wide and stable stance, then you bring the arms up. And warrior one is simply observing, observing without judgment, taking in the facts. Release the arms out wide, place your hands in your back pockets, let the elbows move closer. And then from here, moving to warrior three. Becoming the arrow, warrior three. So transfer the weight forward and finding warrior three. If you need the chair, it's right there. So the chair symbolizes external support and it's right there if you need it. And then find your way back to Tadasana, mountain posture. Okay, inhale to chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra, transfer the weight to the right, left heel comes off. Take a big step back, find the earth behind you. Create a wide and stable stance. And then bring the arms up. No rush, no rush. Open up the wings, open up the wings, place your hands in your back pockets, bring the elbows together. If you want to, you can bring your awareness to your heart space. And then allow your heart to lead, allow your heart to lead the way forward into warrior three. And the chair is there as external support whenever you need it. And then find your way back to Tadasana. Okay, stepping back to warrior two. Inhale to chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra. Transfer the weight, lift the heel, step back. This time, open up the pelvic half. Open up the pelvic half. One arm in the past, the other one in the future. And you are right here in the present moment. Flip the front, the front hand and reverse the warrior. What did you learn from the past? What did you learn from the past?
and then bring that with you and then come back and then move into the future extended side angle. So with all that experience, how are you going to plan better for the future? And then come back to warrior two in the present moment. Place your hands on your hip, straighten the front knee, release the hand down to the chair. Trikonasana. Bring the gaze up, let the arm follow. Hand comes down, gaze comes down. Uh, back to warrior two one more time. And then place both hands on the chair, stay there for a moment. And then transfer the weight and pick up that back leg, moving into Ardha Chandrasana. And you can take that bottom hand off the chair if you want to. And then finding your way back to mountain posture, Tadasana. All right, inhale to chair, exhale to the to Anjali Mudra, transfer the weight, take a big step back, open up the pelvic half, finding warrior two on the other side, placing one arm in the past and the other one in the future. And you are right here in the present moment. Flip the front hand, reverse the warrior. And maybe think about your pattern. Maybe think about are you do you are you an end person or a beginning beginning person? What is your pattern if you look at the past? And then come back to the present move, uh, moment, moving into the future and going forward. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What is helpful? And then coming back to the present moment one more time. Hands on your hips, straighten the front knee, release the hand down. Moving into Trikonasana. So what kind of a blinking, bubbling star do you need to be? Bring the hand down, bring the gaze down, uh, rebound that front knee one more time. And then place the hands on the chair. Stay there a few moments. Transfer the weight, pick up that back foot. Maybe bring that hand down to the floor for Ardha Chandrasana. And then slowly moving back to mountain posture. Okay, let's plant the seed and create a tree. Okay, here we go. Starting in mountain posture. We're at the top of the mountain and there is a little bit of a, there's some soil there, drop the seed. Watch how the roots are growing wide and deep. You can't see anything on the surface yet. And then when the time is right, transfer the weight and start to create a plant. It could be a flower, a shrub, a tree, or maybe something completely different. What would you like to create today?
Maybe it's a character in a book, like Stitch. And you are allowed to try different things and figure out what works for you. And then slowly find your way back to Tadasana. Breathe. And then drop another seed. Watch the roots grow wide and deep. Transfer the weight and start creating something on the other side. You can do the same thing or you can do something different. And if you lose your balance, the floor is there. The, I have a wall next to me that I can use as external support. And then finding your way back. Okay, now place the feet a little wider than your hips, spread the toes, hands on the chair, and the knees come together. You can stay here or you can sit back on your heel for like a Virasana version. Ver version. Okay, now look at your right thumb. Imagine the end. Give the end a color and then draw a big circle, a big circle, and then give that heel a little dot. Now look at your left thumb. Think about the beginning. Give the beginning a color and draw a big circle, big circle, give it a dot. Now mix the two, mix the two colors, and then you draw two big circles, big circles, and place your hands in your back pocket, stay there. Now, if you want to bring your awareness to your heart space, breathe into your heart space, and notice, what is your heart's deepest longing? What does your heart truly desire? And then release, untuck the toes. Uh, you can keep the knees closed and then sit back on your heels for a closed leg um, child's posture. And then inhale and come back up. Now, clasp your hands, create that, um, ex that support with, it's like a triangle with four corners. Tuck your toes, lean into your support, make sure it is solid. If it's not, you change it. And then lean in, lift the knees off and come all the way up to dolphin posture. And then bend your knees, bend your knees, and come all the way up to standing. All right, great. So now we are going to, we, we are done with where well, we prepared us with the physical practice. And now we're going to listen to Pamela Gra again and see what we hear this time. 
Okay. We never know. When we think that something is going to bring us pleasure, we don't know what's really going to happen. When we think something is going to give us misery, we don't know. Letting there be room for not knowing is the most important thing of all. We try to do what we think is going to help, but we don't know. We never know if we're going to fall flat or sit up tall. When there's a big disappointment, we don't know if that's the end of the story. It may be just the beginning of a great adventure. Okay, and now uh, we're moving on to the seated meditation. So I'm going to be quiet for about eight minutes. Uh, so sitting up tall, finding your breathing or your breath, and then I'll be quiet for about eight, nine minutes. Here we go.
Wiggle your fingers. Wiggle your toes. Gently move your head from side to side. Take a big inhale. Let it go. Place your hands in Anjali Mudra, holding your own heart in between your hands with self-love and self-compassion. Maybe bow your head in gratitude for this practice, thousands of years old. Thank your inner guide, your past, present, and future teachers, and all the people that are joining you on this journey. Raise your gaze, open your eyes, and thank you so much for practicing together this morning. Namaste. Okay, and now if you have your journal, this is a good, good time to pick it up. So it's June 26th, and the two concepts that we worked with was um, the end or the beginning. So I'm just writing down the two concepts, the end and the beginning. I have the date, oh, and then the title was, we never know, we never know. So that was, um, so that's the structure that Pema gave us or from the reading from Yama, from Pema. Um, and then if you want to, you can spend some time after, right after class, reflect and just write down a few words or a story or um, what colors, it can be an image, uh, it could be a, uh, just, just color. Mm -hmm.